Good morning, KCQ, Good Tree. Welcome to Sunday worship service. I pray that you are joining us this morning, ready to worship our King and our Lord, Jesus Christ. If you feel that you are not uh, properly ready to worship God yet, I ask that you take a moment, maybe pause this video, and uh, you know, go ahead and get, uh, you know, get dressed up, and uh, you know, wash your face, and put your socks on, get your hair done, and maybe brush your teeth. And to join us to worship God who deserves all our worship. Psalm 95 Come, let us shout joyfully to the Lord, shout triumphantly to the rock of our salvation. Let us enter his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout triumphantly to him in song. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods let us pray heavenly father we come before you today and we worship you you are our king you are our lord you are the rock of our salvation we come with thanksgiving for all that you've done for us you are good and your love endures forever we ask that you will come and meet with us wherever we are and you receive our praises as we lift up your name with songs and speak to us lord god as we eagerly await for your word. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my own.
Today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 17 through 27, and we're going to skip to verses 30 to 35. Let us all stand in the reverence of the word of God. Then he asked them, What is this dispute that you're having with each other as you are walking? And they stopped walking and looked discouraged. The one named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that happened there in these days? What things? he asked him. So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet powerful in action and speech before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we were hoping that he was the one who was about to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it's the third day since these things happened, Moreover, some women from our group astounded us. They arrived early at the tomb, and when they didn't find his body, they came and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see him. He said to them, How foolish and slow you are to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Wasn't it necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. And we're going to skip to verse 30. It was as he reclined at the table with them that he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Weren't our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road and explaining the scriptures to us? That very hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those with them gathered together, who said, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then they began to describe what had happened to on the road and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The title of this sermon is Disappointed During This Appointed Time. Disappointed during this appointed time. In today's text, we're going to look at two people who are utterly disappointed. Why were they disappointed? Because for three years, for about three years, what they thought was happening uh, was something they had dreamed of all their lives. They dreamt of a powerful man of God to come to rescue them, a prophet like Elijah, a judge like Gideon, and a, maybe a king like David, a man who will come to liberate the nation of Israel from Rome, like the rebels in Star Wars, uh, waiting for the Jedi to come back to rescue them from the empire. The Jews were waiting for their own Jedi to come, and they were sure that Jesus was the one to come. But when Jesus was captured, Almost everyone ran away. Even the few who remained, remained nearby, hoping some sort of a miracle to happen, eventually scattered when Jesus breathed his last breath on the cross. Everyone left. Everyone discouraged in disbelief, disappointed. Three days have passed, and now the story zooms in to two disciples. Uh, one of them was named Cleopas, and they were so disappointed that even the news about uh, his resurrection, the testimony of the woman who saw the angel, the, the testimony of the, the, the 
the disciples who went to the tomb and saw that the tomb was empty, uh, none of those mattered to them. They got up, left Jerusalem, decided to head down to Emmaus. Maybe that's where they were from. In their minds, Jesus was not the one who, uh, were, who they were waiting for. They've decided that it was all over. Their hope of Israel's redemption was all over. Three years of excitement, all gone, all for nothing. Discouraged, in disbelief, and disappointed. Uh, just when they have given up, our hero, the Jedi, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, he shows up. But for some reason, they're prevented from recognizing him. Why? Uh, the answer can be found in today's text. Uh, I'd like to give you three elements the disciples needed to see Jesus as a Savior and the Lord. So they were lacking three things, and then the three things that they needed are found in today's scripture. I pray uh, that this message reaches out to those of you who have not received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And I pray that God will tug your hearts today to receive Him. And I also would like to encourage those of you who are going through disappointments in life and perhaps failures like uh, these two disciples, uh, Jesus will meet you there because He will not leave you in despair and in disappointment. So the first element the disciples needed was a proper knowledge about Jesus. When the disciples were walking down to Emmaus, uh, Jesus showed up to walk alongside with them. Uh, this was an exchange between those three of them. Uh, Jesus comes and he asks, what is this dispute that you're having with each other as you are walking? And so I guess the, the conversation between the two, uh, you know, maybe they were arguing whether Jesus was the one or he was not the one. How can he be the one when he's crucified? You know, that was the argument. Uh, and disciples, uh, when, when Jesus showed up to ask them this question, he said, they said, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that happened there in these days? And Jesus asks, what things? And they, they explain to him what happened. But notice uh, here the, the way they are describing Jesus to Jesus. Uh, first, they address him as Jesus of Nazareth. This is the distinction used in the beginning of Jesus' ministry when people really didn't know who he was. Uh, after miracles and powerful teachings, everyone ended up simply just calling him Jesus and they knew who he was. Uh, in the beginning, if someone was to uh, mention Jesus, people would be like, Jesus who? And then he would say, Jesus of Nazareth. And they would say, oh, the carpenter's son. After a while, eventually, if someone was to say, hey, Jesus is coming to town. And because he became so popular, nobody had to ask Jesus who. They knew that it was Jesus, the Jesus. Uh, it's like if I were to say, hey, LeBron is on ESPN tonight, and you, none, of, none of you would say, LeBron who? Because we all know when I say LeBron, it's a LeBron James, the basketball player. But now, in a very sad way, Jesus, uh, in the minds of the, the two disciples, he was sort of um, demoted, reduced to one of many Jesuses, Jesus of Nazareth. Just an ordinary person, maybe a little special, maybe a little different than others, but nevertheless, not the Messiah. And they continue to say, Jesus, who was a prophet, who was a prophet, powerful in action and speech, they spoke to him, described him like in a, in a past tense. He was a prophet, but no more since he's been crucified. Verse 21 says, we were hoping he was the one who was about to redeem Israel. They even said, they heard the women talk about how they saw a vision of angels and the other disciples saw also that the tomb was empty. You see, if there was anyone that was supposed to know Jesus, it was those who walked closely with him for three years. But these two only knew him as a powerful prophet of God. You know, for the next two, few months, you will get to know me a little bit. Um, through my messages and my, my interaction with you guys, one thing you should know about me is that I am a huge fan of sitcom called Friends. Uh, it ran from 1994 to 2004, 10 seasons. Uh, it's a story of six friends living in uh, Manhattan 
So I was very excited to come to New York. Uh, I watched the entire 10 seasons about 100 times. I know it so well, uh, and I'm not, not to brag or anything, but for a while, I was ranked top three in QuizUp. It's an app uh, of uh, trivia games in Friends Trivia category in the state of Tennessee. I was ranked top three, and the other two who were ranked top three with me were also my friends, and us three, we have a Kakao Talk group chat where we only talk about friends and we just make references and make jokes about friends. We're totally geeks. And although I know the characters really well, I don't know them personally. I don't know Jennifer Aniston. I don't know Courtney Cox. I don't know David Schwimmer, uh, Matthew Perry, Lisa Kudrow, Matt LeBlanc. I don't know them personally. I just know them as just characters of a sitcom, Rachel, Monica, Ross, Chandler, uh, Phoebe, and Joey. The two disciples just knew Jesus as a prophet. They hoped that Jesus was the one who would come to liberate the Jews from the, the evil empire of Rome. But you see, Jesus is the Son of God, the creator of the universe, the Word of God Himself, the Savior of the world, the Messiah. And I want to ask you, do you know Jesus? Or do you know him just as a character from a story? Or maybe a name that is mentioned in a couple of the songs that you like to sing? Guys, it's my sincere prayer this morning that you get to know Jesus, not just as a character of a story, a name in a song, but as your personal Savior and your Lord. Second element that the disciples needed was a proper understanding of the Bible. Verse 25 to 27, it reads like this. He said to them, How foolish and slow you are to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Wasn't it necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. The coming of the Savior has long been prophesied over and over. God showed Jesus throughout the Old Testament. His birth, his life, his death were all uh, foretold and fulfilled. Uh, there are examples of Jesus throughout the Old Testament, like the, the serpent in the wilderness or the Passover lamb. All these things are just marks or a shadow of Jesus. Everything, everything in the Old Testament was pointing toward Jesus Christ. And you know what? It's okay if you can't make that, uh, if you don't understand, if you can't connect those dots, it's okay. But the disciples, they grew up learning about this. Okay, From generation to generation, they were eagerly waiting for the Messiah shown in the, their Bible, which is the Old Testament. For them not to connect the dots, uh, that's a, you know, it's a little surprising, right? That's why Jesus sort of teased them, maybe rebuked them a little bit by saying how foolish and slow you are for not to know this. They knew the Bible from cover to cover, but they have failed to find out that the entire Bible was pointing to Jesus Christ. Sadly, though, this is happening today for many people. To many people in the world, the Bible is a self-help book, right? or, or maybe like a do-good, feel-good kind of book. It's a book of moral teachings, but they cannot find Jesus in the Bible. One time I was traveling on a plane. Uh, the plane took off, so I took out my Bible to start to read it. Uh, the guy who sat next to me was intrigued that I was reading the Bible. So we kind of made a little exchanges here and there, and this was his comment. Uh, he said, I don't believe Jesus. I don't believe the things that the Bible talks about, the miracles and all that stuff. But I think it's a good book. I, I think it's a good book and it's a, it's a book about how to be a good person. Therefore, I sometimes read the Bible. For many people, it's a, eh, it's a boring book, right? That, that you don't want to read unless you're told to by your pastor or by your parents. And, you know, still for some people, it's a, a book of encouragement, okay? perhaps a book that you read when you are sad, a book that you might read when you feel lost and maybe you need like a sense of direction, 
while it is all that, you must eventually find out that everything is pointing to Jesus. Even the moral teachings are pointing to how morally perfect and holy Jesus is. If you spend hours and hours doing the 1,000-piece jigsaw puzzle, and you get to the very end and find out that, the, that you are missing just one piece, and then you are left with an unfinished puzzle. Your work, all those hours that you put in, is in vain. Jesus is that missing piece. And when you put that last piece in and you finish that puzzle, the entire puzzle, you're going to see the entire puzzle is actually a portrait of Jesus himself. And I pray that our reading and studying of the Bible, the day, maybe the daily Bible, the gospel project, or listening to sermons, uh, will, be, will prove to be fruitful as you discover Jesus Christ in them, the Savior who came to save sinners like you and I. The third element the disciples needed was the work of the Holy Spirit. Even after Jesus explained everything, he connected all the dots, uh, put that last piece of jigsaw puzzle in, 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 in and to complete the puzzle, uh, they still were blinded to recognize Jesus. He was still just a stranger who they ran into on their way to Emmaus. It was over a three-hour walk from Jer Jerusalem to Emmaus, and, and they were talking the whole time. They even found a place to stay for the night because it was getting dark, and um, you know, they asked Jesus to uh, stay with them. And even until the moment, they were sitting around the dinner table, and Jesus broke the bread. That, until that moment, they still couldn't re uh, recognize Jesus. And when Jesus took the bread, He blessed it, and He broke it, and He gave it to them, their spiritual eyes opened and immediately recognized Him. How surprised, excited they must have been. See, when, the, when Jesus broke the bread, by the way, which was a symbol of Jesus' body being broken for our sins, uh, the Holy Spirit enabled them to see Jesus as who He really was. Sort of a symbolic uh, event here. Uh, no matter how much knowledge that was put into their, their heads, uh, without the, the, the word is illumination, the illumination of the Holy Spirit, they could not see Jesus as a Savior and the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 explains to us clearly, For you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift, not from work, so that no one can boast. So in order for us to believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit must make it possible by giving us the gift of faith. Can we take a moment to thank God? We didn't earn this gift of salvation. Okay? If it was up to us to earn our own salvation, all of us would fail and end up in hell. None of us will be successful in obtaining our own salvation. And because God knew that, He decided that He would give it to us at the free of charge, gift of faith given to us at the free of charge. Praise God. So to recap, uh, three elements the disciples needed to see Jesus as a Savior and Lord were a proper knowledge about Jesus, a proper understanding of the Bible, and the work of the Holy Spirit to complete the whole thing. And you might ask, why didn't Jesus just reveal himself to the disciples right away? Why, why close their eyes for three additional hours? Why let them walk those three hours of just a miserable walk? Why did Jesus unnecessarily keep them in despair and in disappointment? I, you know, I cannot tell you exactly why, but what I can tell you is this. Jesus, in His infinite wisdom and in His infinite love for us, knows exactly what we need, the circumstance, the timing, the emotions, in order for us to come to the point in our life to see Him as Savior. He knows exactly what we need, the circumstance, the timing, the emotions, in order for us to grow, 
in order for us to become mature in our walk with Him, to learn to love Him fully and to be satisfied in Him. Uh, Reverend John Piper uh, puts it this way, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. Uh, so may I dare say, uh, even if we cannot explain the reason and the, the profitability behind every event in our lives, we know that everything will work together for God's maximum glory through us and our maximum satisfaction in God. Let me say that one more time. Everything will work together for God's maximum glory through us and our maximum satisfaction in God. For the two disciples, the three additional hours of disappointment was an appointed time. They needed those three additional hours so that they, when they finally saw Jesus as himself, they would be most satisfied, and through that, God would be most glorified. You might be going through some tough time. You might be disappointed of certain events in your life. You might be sad. You might be discouraged. Uh, just like the two disciples, just uh, you know, trudging down the road, may feel frustrated and lost. Every step that you take might be heavy and burdensome. But I pray that the road that you're walking today is your road to Emmaus. Where Jesus will come and meet you there. He will come and He will talk to you. He will come and He will reveal Himself to you. And when He does so, as you will be most satisfied in Him, God will be most glorified in you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for speaking to us this morning. We thank you that you have saved us through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We thank you that you did not require works from us to be saved, but you gave us the faith as a gift. And we thank you that you know us better than we ourselves and that you know everything and every circumstance we need in order for us to love you more and know you better. As the disciples were walking on the road to Emmaus, defeated and disappointed. Many of us are walking our own road of Emmaus, defeated and disappointed. Lord, we, we, would you come and meet each and every one of us at the road to Emmaus this morning. Help us to see you as a Savior and the King that you are, and learn to trust you and believe in you. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A thousand times I failed Still your mercy remains Should I stumble again I'm caught in your grace Everlasting Your light will shine When all else fades Never
answer me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice increase, become my embrace to love you from the inside out. May the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the steadfast love of our God the Father and the everlasting fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us forever. Amen.